So we just recently got, actually we have the newest <laughs> Mexican consulate office uh, throughout all of North America. It's located right here on the east side of Milwaukee. Um, I know there's a lot of people who put a lot of effort into bringing it here. Um, I think that's really a testament to the growing Hispanic community in the area and the demand for services, etc. I think it's also a huge win for business here in the state. Um, Mexico, I believe, is either the first or second largest trading partner for our state. And by having that council here provides tremendous opportunity, not just for those here in need of their services, but really opens up a whole new door for doing business uh, in, in Mexico. So very excited about that. The, the new location is, or their new council is located up there on the east side, um, actually directly right across the street from the Milwaukee Jewish Federation uh, and a lot of other um, influential groups in the area. So uh, we're working to bring all of those groups together and make the introductions there. So once again, could help further not only their mission, uh, but more importantly, the services that they're able to offer people here in, in and around uh, the Wisconsin area and equally as important, opening up um, new economic opportunities in New Mexico so we could really start creating even more new jobs here in the state. Immigration is a very complex subject, so I don't blame certain segments of the media for not understanding the right questions to ask or the right issues. That being said, um, I know we've offered on numerous occasions to, to hold briefings uh, to educate them because uh, I believe they want to report the right story, but often don't know what is what are the the, the right questions or, or the key information to get out there. That being said, I will hold another section of the media accountable. Um, there are networks, I'm sure we all know who they are, that parade out night after night, these experts. <laughs> but it's the same people night after night uh, that proclaim and, and to know everything there is about immigration reform and whatever other issue they're hosting that night that are simply reciting talking points put out by certain individuals with certain interests. Them I will hold accountable for spreading misinformation. So um, there are those that um, in the media that are honestly trying but just don't have enough history or backstory or knowledge to, to deliver the story properly. Um, but then there are those also who are promoting these misperceptions, misinformation, and seeding, seeding the ground for divisiveness and in more than one occasion, you know, sadly to say, hate. So I do get a lot of questions with regards to um, our position and my work on the issue with regards to Wisconsin's voter, voter ID, photo ID law and its requirement. And, and I, I respond to that in two parts, really. One is, as we look back on a lot of the testimony that's gone on with regards to this and other parts of legislation, it's become more than obvious that sadly there are a number in the state legislature that have, and I hate to say this sounding partisan because anyone who knows me knows I'm, I'm center right, um, that are passing legislation that will give them nothing more than an ad, uh, advantage and ability to win in the next election cycle. It's not legislation it's about good governance. It's about seeking that advantage to win at any cost. I think everyone would agree we want to make sure only people who are eligible to vote do vote. But there's literally zero proof that there's been any voter fraud committed. Personally, what's been even more troubling was when this whole debate was raging on, I would listen to certain conservative talk radio shows or television shows and I would hear about all these illegals swarming into the country to steal our elections just so they could get more free stuff. Those are all claims that are completely baseless, without merit, without any factual representation or facts behind them. So as, as a person, as a Latino, as, a, as an American, but a proud Hispanic American, that I found that to be very offensive. With regards to the legality, um, and, and why, you know, LULAC, and I was part of the effort that took it all the way to the Supreme Court. We, we fought this. 
was because when you look at how rigid, rigid the ID requirements were, denying our veterans to use their veterans cards and a number of other like situations to be able to use those to vote. When you looked at them saying, well, it's not hard, you just simply go down and, and you get a photo ID. But when you look at district after district in Wisconsin, where the, the facility get an ID uh, may be only open on one day every couple of months, you start to see a pattern here. And when we went back and we did the homework and we saw that because of this law overnight, approximately 10% of Wisconsin's entire electorate would not be allowed to vote because they didn't have that required ID, well then we just know that this was a law that simply went way too far. A democracy should be encouraging its citizenry to participate in their elections. In their elections. That's what makes a democracy great. That's what makes it a democracy. To discourage people from participating in the process is, is not a sign of loving your country. All you're doing is seeking political advantage. And that's why we came out the way we did.